Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Fawn Manor and the Robert E. Howard Show. It's the Robert E. Howard Show. I know it's been a while since I did a Robert E. Howard Show, but I'm back to talk about Robert E. Howard and the best of Robert E. Howard. What is his best anyway? Well, I already talked about this sort of. I did do a top 10 list of my favorite Robert E. Howard stories. I did do that a while back, but others have made their opinions known, including the editors of the publications that I'm going to be talking about today. I've got three different publications, including the first major publication of Robert E. Howard's fantasy and horror, which was the Skull, uh, Skull Face and Others. It was Skull Face and Others, edited by August Leth and published by Arkham House in 1946, if I'm remembering right. Arkham House, of course, is the small press that originally published H.P. Lovecraft's fiction in hardcover. And they also published a bunch of other great pulp and horror writers and fantasy writers, including Clark Ashton Smith, Algernon Blackwood, and a lot of others. But this edition of Robert E. Howard's fiction was a best of volume that was edited and chosen by August Leth, and is a dynamite collection. It's, it's a great book, which unfortunately I do not own because it is very expensive. But, but I do have the British reprint of it. This one, this is the Skullface Omnibus. They retitled it the Skullface Omnibus. This was published by Neville Spearman. This edition is from 1975. Has a fella on here that looks a little bit like my pal Roger. But... It's a cool book, and I don't know why they retitled it, because if you go to the title page, it is Skullface and Others. And this is actually just a duplicate, it looks like, of the original publication. Unfortunately, the dimensions are smaller than the original book was, which has the, re which has the effect of making the print pretty much the smallest of any I've ever seen in any book. It's tiny, man. Tiny little print in this book. You need your glasses to read this one. But it's fantastic because Derleth made some great choices. And it's an excellent collection of stories. It also has a couple other things in it that makes it interesting. I'm going to go to the introduction by Derleth just to give his thoughts, to, to read you some of his thoughts about Robert E. Howard and his best stories. His best story is, perhaps, Worms of the Earth. Though many of his contemporaries have been fond of the Black Stone and the Valley of the Worm, as well as of other stories. In the tales concerning Solomon Cain, Bran MacMorn, King Cull, and Conan, there is quite possibly more bloodletting and more lusty carnage than in any other group of stories which appeared in pulp magazines in America during the 1930s. There have come to Arkham House frequent requests for a collection of all the Conan stories. Such a collection would almost have to be printed on blood-colored paper and be introduced to readers with appropriate thunderclaps. For if Howard liked anything better than a good fight, there is no evidence of it in his Conan stories. Quite apart from his penchant for blood and thunder, Howard had a faculty for telling stories which was equaled by few of his contemporaries in Weird Tales. Stories was always primary. Atmosphere, which he could do well. Character, all else, were secondary. So yeah, you're going to want to read this book after reading that. And it's a really interesting selection of stories. And a couple of other things in here as well. It starts out with... Uh, Robert Irvin Howard, A Memoriam by H.P. Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft was a friend of Robert E. Howard. They wrote each other all the time. And when Robert e., uh, excuse me, when H.P. Lovecraft got the news of Robert E. Howard's death, he was devastated. And so he, he wrote a very touching piece about Robert E. Howard, which they, which Derleth included at the beginning of this volume, which was a good choice to make. Also, this has a memory of R.E. Howard, by E. Hoffman Price. E. Hoffman Price was a pulp writer. Uh, not too much of his stuff is in print today that I'm aware of, although you can get his stuff as ebooks. 
And E. Hoffman Price is the only writer that I know of that actually met Robert E. Howard in person. And this little piece here talks about his meeting Robert E. Howard and his impressions of Robert E. Howard. And it's really interesting. It's a really interesting little piece, and I'm glad Derleth included it. And then we get on to the stories. It actually starts off with a poem, one of his best, which will scarcely be understood is the title of the poem. Excellent way to start the book. Then he goes right to Wolf's Head. Wolf's Head, a werewolf story that I'm pretty fond of. I like that story. Then he, then the Black Stone, definitely one of his best horror stories. The Horror from the Mound, The Cairn on the Headland, Black Canaan, The Fire of Astrobanipal, a, a really good story that. A Man-Eating Jeopard, Skullface, The Hyborian Age, Worms of the Earth, The Valley of the Worm, Skulls in the Stars, Rattle of Bones, The Hills of the Dead, Wings in the Night, The Shadow Kingdom, The Mirrors of Tuz and Thun, Kings of the Night, The Phoenix on the Sword, The Scarlet Citadel, The Tower of the Elephant, Rogues in the House, Shadows in Zambala, and it ends off with a poem, Lines Written in the Realization that I Must Die. This is an interesting selection of stories. Some of his pulpier stories are in here. There are some interesting choices. Um, the Horror in the Mound is just a very pulpy horror story. I like it. It's an interesting choice. I'm not sure it's one of Howard's best. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not. But I'm kind of glad it's in here because it's kind of a fun story. And there are some choices like that uh, in here. Skullface is extremely pulpy. Of course, the title story. A lot of people really like that story. And it was well thought of, but extremely pulpy. Uh, and it's fun, though, so I'm, I'm glad it's in here. Uh, we have the essay, The Hyborian Age, which just sets the background. It, well, it starts off to set the background for the Conan stories, and it sort of becomes a story by the end of it. It's an interesting essay. Not sure I would have put it in a best of volume. Definitely belongs in any volume of Conan. Interesting to see it here, though. We have some other really great stories. Worms of the, of the Earth, of course, absolutely one of his best stories. That definitely belongs in here. Uh, of his Solomon Cain stories, he included Skulls in the Stars, Rattle of Bones. I'm not sure Rattle of Bones is one of the best. Hills of the Dead, though, and Wings in the Night, two of his best stories. I'm sort of surprised not to see the Shadow Kingdom in here. Excuse me, not to see, not to see Red Shadows. Red Shadows was a great Solomon Cain story. I'm a little surprised it's not in here. But of course, The Shadow Kingdom, which was a King Cole story and possibly the first sword and sorcery story ever written. Every best of volume of Robert E. Howard pretty much requires that story to be in there because it's amazing. Uh, has the mirrors of Tuz and Thun. Kings of, Kings of the Night, which is the team up between King Cole and um, Bran MacMorn, excellent story. And then he moves into his Conan, his choices for Conan. The Phoenix on the Sword, which was the first Conan story. The Scarlet Citadel, excellent story. Yeah, that deserves to be in here. The Tower of the Elephant, one of Robert E. Howard's best, so of course that's in here. Rogues in the House, which is a story you don't see too often, or you wouldn't expect in a, an anthology like this. Really fun story, and I'm glad it's in here. Uh, that one's excellent. Shadows in Zambaula, not one of the best Conan stories, <laughs> but a fun story. And again, it's an interesting choice. And just some of the interesting choices in here, it's, it's kind of cool. This is a wonderful volume. I wish they would reprint this in a new edition. It deserves reprinting. Um, in, in an edition that was larger and that you could actually read easily, you know, without the teensy tiny print. Like I said, this is, this is great and possibly the best one volume collection of his stories ever. And for a long time, that was like the best of volume of Robert E. Howard that you can get. But 
In 2007, when Del Rey did their Robert E. Howard editions, Rusty Burke, a, Rob a Robert E. Howard scholar, put together this two-volume set. It's a two-volume set of the best of Robert E. Howard. Two volumes. And one volume wasn't enough. There was just too much to choose from, I think. And so he came out with a two-volume set. The first volume is The Best of Robert E. Howard, Volume 1, Crimson Shadows. And Volume 2 is Grimlands. Now, this is probably the definitive best of volume, if there could be such a thing. But it's if you put them together, it's pretty giant. It's over 900 pages if you put both of these together. So it's a giant best of. And I think it might possibly have been a mistake, I think, to do it in two volumes. One of the good things about a best of volume is it's something that if somebody has never read Robert E. Howard before, this would be something you can just hand to them and say, hey, check this out. And maybe a two volume set is a little bit much for that. But I can't fault the contents of these volumes. I mean, there's just, there's a ton of stuff in here. I also like the artwork by Jim and Ruth Keegan. This is uh, an illustrated edition. And uh, all the stories are headed off by just great illustrations. And they're just wonderful illustrations throughout the volume. Uh, very stylized, but very cool. Um, it's... It's fun stuff. And one thing about this collection is it does give a pretty well-rounded view of Robert e. the extent of Robert E. Howard's fiction. You have his fantasy, you have his horror, you have boxing stuff in here, you have historical stuff in here. So the two volumes has, I mean, they, ha they have everything. And so let's go through it. What did they choose? So this is the first volume and there's a bunch in here because this book is just the first volume alone is what 500 pages almost yeah it's yeah 501 pages so let's take a look so it starts off the way a collection a best of collection should start it starts off with the shadow kingdom which i just talked about the shadow kingdom is a that's the first story you want i think in a best of volume just because when you read the opening lines of that story, it's just so beautiful. And it's just so, it's just such a great example of Robert E. Howard's writing. Uh, so The Shadow Kingdom, not only is it one of his best stories, the, the writing in it, right from the start, is just Howard at his best, definitely. So I would start it, if I were to do one, I would start it just the way uh, this volume starts, with The Shadow Kingdom. And then it moves on to some interesting stuff. It, it it has some poems kind of put in between the stories. So the complete contents, the Shadow Kingdom, the Ghost Kings, the Curse of the Golden Skull, Red Shadows. So there we have Red Shadows. Uh, that Solomon Cain story is in this one. The One Black Stain, The Dark Man, The Marching Song of Kanat, Kings of the Night, Recompense, The Black Stone, The Song of the Mad Minstrel, the Fightinest Pair, one of his boxing stories. The Grey God Passes. The Song of the Last Britain. Worms of the Earth, of course. An Echo from the Iron Harp. Lord of the Dead, Untitled. For the Love of Barbara Allen. The Tide. The Valley of the Worm. The Dust Dance Selections, Version 2. The People of the Black Circle. Beyond the Black River. A Word from the Outer Dark, Hawk of the Hills, Sharp's Gun Serenade, and Lines Written in the Realization that I Must Die. So, a bunch of poems and stories. I'm glad he, that Rusty Burke decided to put uh, stories, uh, excuse me, poems in there with the stories. Because he did write some excellent poetry as well, Robert E. Howard. So, a great selection, actually. The Grey God Passes, a great story. I'm glad to see that in here. Um, the Black Stone, of course. So a bunch of stories that I would choose myself just happen to be in this volume. Interesting that he has the people of the Black Circle in here uh, for a Conan story. It is a great Conan story. Definitely deserves to be in here. And definitely Beyond the Black River. Man, that's a great story. 
So then we also have a volume two. Volume two, which is also, yeah, also 500 pages. So together these are, together this makes up a giant volume. Uh, again, excellent artwork in this volume. And what do we have in here? Uh, this starts off with a cull story. Again, by this axe I rule. The king and the oak. The mirrors of Tuz and Thun. The tower of the elephant. Which will scarcely be understood. Wings in the night. Solomon Cain's homecoming. The lord of Samarkand. Timurlang. A song of the naked lands. The shadow of the vulture. Echoes from an anvil. The bulldog breed. Black harps in the hills, the man on the ground, old Garfield's heart, vultures of Wapeton, gents on the lynch, the grim land, pigeons from hell, never beyond the beast, wild water, musings, son of the, of the white wolf, black vulma as vengeance, flints passing, red nails, and Samaria. Again, I can't fault the contents here. Just some great stuff. Um, yeah. Just fantastic stuff. Interesting, we've got the Vultures of Wapeton in there, so we've got one of his best Western stories. Uh, that one was excellent. Shadow of the Vulture is in here, which was the red, his one Red Sonia story. And it's a great story. You gotta have Red Sonia, so I'm glad that was in here as well. Red Nails, an epic, an epic Conan story. I like that one an awful lot. It's, that was Robert E. Howard's last Conan story that he wrote. So, like I said, if this is probably the best, best of volume, or the, volumes. It's the best publication of Robert E. Howard's best stories. It's just probably too big. I think it's probably too big. I think they should have done a one volume and just narrowed down the contents, put out a one volume. I think it would have done better. These didn't do as well uh, as far as sales are concerned as the other Del Rey editions, which is understandable because if you have those other Del Rey editions, you've got a lot of duplications as far as the stories are concerned. And like I said, I think if you do a, a best of volume, it should just be one volume you can give to somebody so that they can just get a taste for the writer. And I guess you could just give volume one I guess you could just do that. And I've done that, actually. But, yeah, it's magnificent. This is a magnificent set of books. So there is that. But that wasn't all. We've also got this. We've also got Heroes in the Wind from Call to Conan. This is from Penguin. This is uh, from Penguin's contemporary classics. Modern classics, excuse me. It's a modern classic. Which is the same way Penguin first published... H.P. Lovecraft. Unfortunately, this volume was never published as an American Black Spine classic in Penguin, which it should have been. I don't know why it never was. This one was published in 2009, I believe. It's a smaller book, so it is a one volume that you could just hand to somebody and they could, they could read it. Uh, this was chosen by John Clute, who did a really good introduction, actually. And let's take a look at the contents of this volume, not as much in here. Starts off with a section called Black Dawn, and we have the Shadow Kingdom. So this starts off right with the Shadow Kingdom, the way you want to start off a best of volume. Then the Mirrors of Tuz and Thun, Kings of the Night, Worms of the Earth, and the Dark Man. Then section two, Dark Interlude. The Footfalls Within, Pigeons from Hell, Great horror story, Graveyard Rats, and again, the Western, Vultures of Wapeton. Then High Noon, this is Conan. This is section three, High Noon. The Tower of the Elephant, Queen of the Black Coast. I'm glad he chose that. That's great. A Witch Shall Be Born and Red Nails. So another excellent collection with some interesting choices in the middle there. I would have chosen different Solomon Kane stories. Um... So there's not too much from Solomon Kane, unfortunately, and I think that's one of his best series. But what he did choose in here, I can't fault. This is an excellent one-volume edition of Robert E. Howard that you could give to somebody, and they could read it and 
they can decide whether they liked Robert E. Howard or not. And of course they would, because he's amazing. Really like how it starts off with Red Shadows. Not Red Shadows. <laughs> I always get that confused with the Shadow Kingdom. It starts off with the Shadow Kingdom, as it should. And so an excellent volume. I wish, I wish there was a Black Spine Classics edition of this, and I, I don't know why there isn't. But if I were to choose, or if I were to create a best of volume of Robert E. Howard, what would I put in there? Well, I would make it a one volume edition, but it would be a fair sized one. I would start off with the Shadow Kingdom, then Red Shadows, Solomon Kane story, then Hill, the Hills of the Dead, more Solomon Kane and one of his best. And probably what I think the best Solomon Kane story is the Wings in the Night. I'd like Solomon Kane a lot, so I'd put a good selection in there. Then Worms of the Earth, indisputably one of his best stories, the Bran MacMorn story. Kings in the Night would be in there. The Dark Man would come next. Wolf's Head, I really like that story, what can I say? The Black Stone, unquestionably one of his best horror stories. Then I would put in Pigeons from Hell, The Shadow of the Vulture, Red Sonia, Son of the White Wolf, I, one of his desert adventures. Uh, great story. Then we would have, we'd move into Conan with the Scarlet Citadel, the Tower of the Elephant, Queen of the Black Coast, and I would close it out with Beyond the Black River. Fantastic Conan story. That would be my collection if I were to edit a collection of Robert E. Howard stories, which would be nice. That would be nice because I think we do need, one thing that we need is a new best of volume of Robert E. Howard. We need new editions of Robert E. Howard. We haven't had any good professional publications of Robert E. Howard since Del Rey, I don't believe. Nothing, we've had some small press stuff, but that's it. But Robert E. Howard needs to come back to some new, new editions, I think. I think it's time. And a best of edition would be, would be good, a one volume best of edition. And that's all I have to say. I will catch you next time.